Now let's set up a scene. We're going to talk about uh, poly painting. So let's go ahead and edit mode, hit Control N. We'll set up a real simple scene here. We'll grab a sphere, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode. And then on the sphere, we'll append a plane. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's delete that plane. This sphere, make sure you hit make poly mesh 3D. And now we can append just a plane primitive here. Go out of solo mode. So this plane primitive, I can hold down shift and rotate this negative 90 so we can put this above and then alt tap this sphere. We're going to shrink this down. Let's hit BTR to go to regular transpose and now I can scale this down here and we've got a plane sitting above here. Let's go back into geometry, turn on dynamic, smooth down to zero, micro poly on and you'll see we've got, for example, like this Weave 04 and then this Weave 04C. And same thing here, Weave 01, Weave 01 color. Let's talk a little bit about that. So if we go over here to Weave 01, we've got a cool weave on there. We've got micro poly fit and weld. We can go through here and we can turn on a collision volume that'll make this sphere a collision volume. In fact, we can probably turn that down quite a bit. We can run the simulation. The micro poly being driven by that plane will go ahead and collide with the surface. If you want, you can even BPR render this. It'll render with nice shadows. You can see we get a very realistic result. Now let's say we wanted to uh, color on this. So what we can do is we can go in here to say BPA to go into our paint brush. And if we go up here, uh, if we have this paint brush turned on, or if we just start painting, it'll turn that on for us. But you can turn on colorize. We can choose a different color like red. And now we can start painting uh, on this. Now you're going to see it's not a very high resolution paint. You can see it kind of fades out. If we go in here to like turn, make it blue, you know, we're kind of painting blue. And of course, if you want to know the basics, go to my YouTube channel, intro to ZBrush, go to my art station page, ZBrush for ideation. That's got the basics on poly painting and stuff. So you can deep dive on that stuff if you'd like. But it's a very low res result. And that's because you got to remember, uh, this is just a preview. This is the, all of this is being driven by a plane. So we're not really painting on this weave, which has a lot more geometry. We're actually just painting on this. So if we go over here and we paint this purple, that's taking that purple and applying it to our weave, which is fine. You can apply it and it'll apply that poly paint you have there uh, to that weave. However, if you hit apply and it's real geometry now. Now the thing about this is if you try to run the simulation now, um, it's too dense, it's 291,000. You can bump this up and it'll simulate. Um, but this is a lot of geometry now. It went from a thousand points, which is, again is literally just your plane, just a thousand point plane, to when we hit apply, now we're at 291,000. So this is why you want to keep your micro polys as low as possible, because uh, if you're putting them even on a simple plane, that can really add up over, you know, several faces with a hundred polygons per all of a sudden you're in the tens, hundreds of thousands of polygons. The cool thing about this though, is if you're done simulating and you actually want to just poly paint directly on those polygons, now you're going to get a much more accurate preview. In fact, if you go in here to polyframe and like we did before, we can go in here to polygroups, auto groups. Ah, this weave actually put them all together. Interesting. That's interesting, but you can still pull out individual fibers. All I need to do is like hold down control shift and let's go grab select lasso. I can just grab a little piece, like one face off of there. Control shift just to grab it. Control shift drag to invert that. Control shift A, which is visibility grow all. And I can just go ahead and grab individual strands from that original object here. So if I go back in here and I do control shift alt, and control shift alt. I mean, ideally, polygroup all will put every non-vert welded object into its own polygroup, but in this case it didn't work. But I can still go through here, control shift A, and now I got individual fibers out of here. So that's interesting as well. But now that we have a lot more polygons, our poly paint, which is vert driven, poly painting means you're painting on the verts of the object. You can go through here, and now when I go through and I paint, on this object with, again, BPA, I'll have a lot higher resolution. So I'm going to go into solo mode here. And if you wanted to, you can be, uh, you can go in here to like a texture, grab a texture out of here, go over here to this plus sign on Spotlight. If you want to know more about Spotlight, I, we've even talked about that in this series as well. But of course, my YouTube channel and all that good stuff. Hit Z to go out of paint, 
uh, go out of that mode, go in here to RGB, or I'm sorry, BPA, and we can actually just poly paint this pattern or this texture through Spotlight onto our fibers here. And of course, if you want a lot of resolution uh, to poly paint on, you can go through here and I'm going to go to geometry and just hit divide. And that's going to take us from 200,000 to 1.7 million. So now we have even more, even more resolution. So if I wanted to go through here and go in and paint on here uh, very precisely, uh, I could. So it's kind of up to you. And one more thing I want to mention is, you know, if these are too, if it's at the right size, but they're a little too open, remember you can always go through here, since this is real geometry, go down here to deformation, and you can even drop this to subdivision level 1. You won't lose any details that you've added in subdivision level 2, but if you want easier uh, manipulation, drop down to subdivision level 1, and you can go through here, and you can do like a deformation inflate, and you can just kind of inflate that up on the fly so you can space it out more, you can scale it up more, and then once you're done you can go back up here to subject level 2. So now if we undo history back to where we just you know had that dynamic plane and we applied this micropoly to it, you may be wondering where do these micropolys live and how do I create custom ones? So we're gonna go into all of that in the next section but I can show you real quick, um, under C Program Files, Pixel Logic Zverse 2021 Z Micropoly, that's where all of these are. So if you add more uh, in here, when we start doing our customs, that's where they'll show up. Now before we do that, there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that's this weave color. And this is going to start transitioning into doing your own custom uh, micropolys and applying poly paints to your custom micropolys. So again, if I hold down Alt and Tap, that's going to throw a version of that out here, and you're going to see this one, uh, unlike the other ones we've thrown out here, like Chainmail, there's no multiple subtools. Here it has four subtools, and you're going to see each one of these uh, has a different topology. There's, you know, the verts have been pushed around, and the color too, it's been poly painted with like a dark black. So basically, he's got this here, and I go to B, P, A, and I can take like a dark gray, and I can just start poly painting on there. The result that's having, and again, we'll get into this more when we start talking about creation specifically. Long story short, uh, each one of these has to have the exact same vert order. If it doesn't have the same vert order, then it's going to completely ignore any subsequent uh, versions you have in here. So essentially, and we'll recreate this when we start creating our own, but essentially you set up a weave and then for each of these you go through here and you just kind of push these things around. But you want to kind of stay away from these edges because you again you want those to be lined up so when it welds it's predictable. So you can go through here and you can smooth uh, inside of here and you can go through here and you can do BPA to go to your paintbrush which is basically just your standard brush with ZI off and RGB turned on. Um, you can go through here and you can like poly paint different patterns as you go through here and then once you have that all set up and you can go through here and name them if you select this one here and you say rename you can give it whatever name you'd like and then we'll go back to our sheet here and if you load up that weave color micro uh, micro poly and you have to go up here and you have to turn on that colorize now again it's just a micro poly and it's just being driven by these faces but now we have a little bit of variation it's a little bit of randomization built in so it's going to use all four of those sub tools to kind of randomly apply that so let's go to smooth div of one and you can see or even smooth div of two you can see it kind of breaks up the repetitiveness. You know, there's there's little micro differences uh, in each one of these woven things here. So now, uh, again, this is just being driven by this micro poly. It's not real yet. We can still go through here. We've turned on colorize, so we can go through here and let's choose like a, something really bright, like a yellow. We can go through here and paint with this yellow, kind of paint. And as we're painting on those, again. We're just painting on these polygons here that's being transferred to our micro poly, so it's going to be kind of low res. You're going to see it's multiplying whatever was colored on that weave through to that poly paint. And if we apply that micro poly to make this real geometry, see we got bumped up to 1.6 million polygons, um, as we're painting, instead of being multiplied, now we're just completely obliterating that poly paint. So previously, when it was micro poly driven, any painting we did, it would multiply that micro poly color through. However, now when it's real geometry and the micro poly is just transferred, so all that gray that was built into it is just transferred, we can just color right on top of that and replace that color.
Now you can have a little bit of control over that if you'd like. Um, you can drop your RGB intensity down and you can kind of just paint a slightly less intense version. Or you can go up here to your brush options. Go in here to your alpha and texture and you're going to see you have different poly paint modes. So four, let's try four. Four is lighten, so we'll switch that to four. And now as we paint over here, it's going to take those dark values that were on our micro poly and lighten them up. If you go to darken, we can paint, and now when we're painting a brighter color, that micro poly is going to stay there. So if you wanted to paint higher fidelity or just on the actual weave geometry itself, that might be a, a good option for you too. It's just to kind of go through here and paint with darkened poly paint mode, and now you can maintain kind of that randomized uh, effect that the micro poly weave was giving to you with the colorized built in.